I had no intentions of making a video review of this GPU, but that was before the fan on my HD 7950 died, leaving me without a graphics card for my main computer. Now I could have ordered up a new card, waited a few days for delivery, and then got back up and running, which I thought was my only option, but then I remembered that I had this XFX Radeon R7 360 on the shelf, which I had purchased for another build. While I knew it wouldn't be as powerful as my aging 7950, I couldn't help but wonder how it would perform. There would be no issue for my day-to-day -day productivity, but how would it handle gaming? I don't do a lot of gaming, but I'm foundering my way through Battlefront at the moment, and thoroughly enjoying it. My concern was this card wouldn't be able to run this title at 1440p. I know that dropping to 1080 was an option, but I have this thing about native resolutions. Imagine my surprise when this little card handled Battlefront at 1440p on medium settings, well enough for me to continue getting annihilated in multiplayer matches, but more on that in a minute. Let's take a closer look at this card. This model is the Radeon R7 360 Core Edition. It features a 1050MHz clock with 768 stream processors and 2GB of GDDR5 memory running on a 128-bit bus. Like all of its larger 300 series siblings, this card supports all the latest features including Crossfire, DirectX 12, Vulkan, Mantle, OpenCL, and OpenGL. AMD FreeSync is also supported on this card for super smooth visuals if you're using a FreeSync capable monitor. There are a total of four display outputs on the back of the card, the HDMI 1.4A and DisplayPort 1.2 ports support resolutions up to 4096 by 2160 The DualLink DVI-D and DVI-I ports offer a maximum resolution of 2560 by 1600 It's a compact card measuring 17.7 cm long, 11.12 cm high, and 3.81 cm wide. This is a dual slot card, but the length would make it a perfect fit for an ITX setup, as the back of the card would not overhang the motherboard. There's a 6-pin PCIe power connection on the top of the card. Cooling is provided by a single 90mm fan as part of XFX's Ghost Thermal 2.0 technology. This is the same cooling setup XFX has been using for a while, but they claim it's been upgraded for the 300 series cards. Throughout the tests, this card never exceeded 60 degrees. We are using it in a roomy NZXT H440 with plenty of airflow. Now that we've had a good look at the card, let's have a closer look at the performance. The test system is nothing fancy. We're running this card with an AMD FX 6300 clocked at 4.0 GHz. We've got 16 GB of DDR3-1866 memory, and we're using an MSI 970A motherboard and an ADATA 240GB SSD. First up is the synthetic benchmarks. In 3D Mark Fire Strike, the R7 360 managed a score of 3567. Running through Valley on the Extreme HD preset, we saw a score of 770, with a minimum frame rate of 11.2, a high of 33.1, and an average FPS of 18.4. In my made-up Star Wars Battlefront test, basically it's the first 90 seconds of the Beggar's Canyon training mission, the R7 360 managed an average frame rate of 40.7 FPS with a maximum of 46 and dipping as low as 33. Now remember, this is at 1440p, a resolution this card was never intended to handle and on medium details. Even on ultra settings, the R7 360 managed an average FPS of 28.9 and only dipped as low as 26 FPS. Dropping the resolution to 1080p for the same sequence on ultra settings netted an average FPS of 44.2 with dips to 40 and spikes to 50, which is a completely playable result and not at all surprising as the R7 360 is aimed at the 1080p user. If you're a 1080p gamer and your library has titles like League of Legends, Dota, or StarCraft, this card would be a fantastic choice for a tight budget build. As for me, I'd only planned to pop this card into my system as a holdover until I ordered my new GPU. But that was over a month ago. I'm satisfied with the performance enough that I'm still using it every day. 
Now I know it won't last. I'm a Star Wars nut. And I know I'm not getting the full visual experience from Battlefront running it on this card. So there will be a GPU upgrade in the near future. Probably as soon as I find a white and black R9 380X on sale. In the meantime, I'm going to keep plugging away in Battlefront with this 360, attempting to upgrade my skills from dismal to mediocre. That's it for this video. Please hit that like button if you found it useful. Also, please leave a comment down below if you've used the R7 360 and what your thoughts are on this entry level card. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.